Uh, it is impossible to walk past a magazine stand these days without seeing the face of one of these young women splashed all over the covers. Suddenly, teen pregnancy has become this pop phenomenon with hit reality shows turning young moms into overnight stars. So the question is, is Hollywood glamorizing teen pregnancy or just giving us a realistic look into the lives of these young mothers? Now, Charles and Jeannie never thought they would hear the words, I'm pregnant, coming from their 16-year-old daughter, Emily's mouth. Let's hear how the news has caused turmoil in this family. I did tell my husband when we said our vows when we got married that it was for better or worse, and this is the worst. I was stunned and shocked. Very quickly, I think we went into emergency containment mode. From the moment I found out I was pregnant, I knew right away there was nothing that was going to change my mind that I was going to keep this baby. I'm concerned that we're going to have to be responsible for this baby financially and otherwise. Right away, he started bringing up the options of adoption and abortion, but keeping the baby really was not in his plans at all. She's not ready to be the mother of a child. I'm supporting her and supporting her decision to keep the baby. Every time we talk about it, it turns into a heated argument. And at 16, I don't think Emily is in a position to be a good mother. I don't really talk to my stepdad because I'm just afraid of how he'll react. I feel really unimportant and unwanted. I feel like I don't even deserve to be in his house. OK. Uh, tell me why we're here today. Jeannie, I'll start with you. Sure. Why are we here today? Um, with Emily being pregnant, it's caused a huge rift in our family. Right. Um, her decision to keep the baby, um, my husband and I don't agree. Charles, you're the stepfather here. All right. Yeah. And you think it's a bad idea for her to keep this baby. Absolutely. And you think what? I think that um, I want to su support my daughter in whatever her decision is. And her decision to keep the baby, I feel like I need to be there to back her up and to be someone she can talk to and lean on during this process. Okay. Is she qualified to make this decision? I know that she's young. I know that she's immature. And I know that, you know, I've done right now, I feel like it's my job to teach her how to become a mom. And it's my job as her mother to kind of get her qualified and get her have, ready. Have you, have you had a reality lesson with her about what's about to happen here? I've kind of gone over um, the logistics of the cost and you know what is entailed and made it very clear to her that her decision to keep the baby, that she's mom. I'm grandma, I'll be there to help support, but she's changing Maybe. diapers, she's doing all the dirty work. Okay, and I understand, and, and you can say that with real conviction, but you don't actually believe that, do you? Do you, you actually know, believe that she's going to raise this child, she's going to nurture this child, develop this child, mature this child, and you're going to go on about your life and, yeah. and just be grandma? No, I think that I'm going to be a big part of it. I mean, I know yeah, I am. Because listen, here, here's the thing. W one thing we've got to do today is we've got to be just completely, brutally honest. Now, that's, that's one of the things that comes with maturity. See, when you're a child, you can kind of have fantasies, and you, and you can kind of entertain things. You can get caught up in the romance and the emotion of something. But when you're moving into the real world, then you have to deal with the absolute, drop-dead, honest, true facts. So if we're going to have a conversation, we've got to be brutally honest here, right? Yeah. And, and you're kind of spinning this a little bit. D do you wish she had decided to keep the baby, or, or, or do you wish she had decided to place it for adoption? I was concerned about her choosing adoption. I was worried about the pain that she would be going through. Were you having unprotected sex? Yeah, I was having unprotected sex, and I was on birth control. OK, but now, you started her on birth control Absolutely. when you found out Absolutely. she was having sex. Right. And, and you said, why don't you just go get her a hotel room? That's something that. Jeannie remembers me saying. Yeah, I okay. remember him saying that. You remember that's having come up before. Because that was hurtful, and I felt like as a mom, what else am I supposed to do? You actually had her take the pill in front of you while you were watching. Yeah, at the every day when she started on the pill. So what did you know that 
made you do that? I know that she forgets. I know when she's had to take medicine in the past, it, you know, she forgets to do it, and I wanted to make sure that she was doing it. And I also children, was... Children aren't responsible about that sometimes. Right. And, you know, also, too, I mean, I did have a fear that she maybe wanted to have a baby, uh -huh. wanted to become pregnant. Did you get pregnant on purpose? No, I did not get pregnant on purpose. Did you want to get pregnant? No. And you want to keep the baby? I'd like to keep the baby. And, and raise the baby. But what you really mean is you want to keep the baby so your family can raise the baby, right? No. And I know that, you know, as she finishes school, as she's working, you know, I know that we're going to be watching the baby, you know, or I You're will gonna be, be watching raising the baby. The baby. I mean, let's, let's be honest. Look, I didn't just come in on a load of turnips. This is not the first teen pregnancy that I've dealt with in the last 35 years. And statistically, the chances of, of her actually graduating have dropped between a third and a half. Uh, the, the chance of her going to college, teen moms, you know what percent of them go to college? No. And, and, and finish and graduate? just a little under 1.5%. Okay. And I think with the whole adoption thing, I mean, that is something that, you know, I've been asked, would you support that? I mean, it would be hard to watch her go through that, and it would be hard for me to watch my daughter go through the pain of that. However, I mean, if that was her choice, if she said, Mom, that's it, this is what I'm doing, then of course I would be there to support her. I think where my <clears throat> problem lies is she has you know, the choice and, and, you know, everybody's kind of looking at her asking what her choice is and, you know, she puts out there, I'm going to raise a baby and what, what are you supposed to do? My older sister Emily is 16. We used to be a lot closer than we are now. Emily started to hit this phase where she just started to be mean to everybody. Emily is in a bad mood more often than she's in a good mood. When I found out that Emily was pregnant, I wasn't shocked or surprised because I saw it coming. There was just a feeling I had. She wanted everything to revolve around her. I think that getting pregnant was a goal for Emily. When she found out, she was happy about it. She's never looked at it as a bad thing. Okay, yeah, thanks for being here. You are very well-spoken. And you are 12, right? Yeah. Um, you, you said you weren't surprised. Why? I definitely wasn't surprised because I kind of saw it coming. I had my, have my like, own intuition. I really think that she was definitely very happy when she found out she was pregnant. You think she did it on purpose? She wants to say that she didn't do it on purpose, but I think there was a part of her that really did want to get pregnant. You said that you want... Um, this is a quote, I want Dr. Phil to make Emily realize she has to get a job and take responsibility for her life. Definitely, I don't think she's uh, responsible enough to be a mother, but I think if she definitely, if she really, really tries, then she can make a great mom. Yeah, you think sis here is ready to be a parent? No, but well, hopefully she can get ready. Why do you think she's not ready? Because she's very self-centered. It's all about her most of the time. Yeah. Um, you say you think she's frustrated that mom wants her to get a job. I definitely think that. Like, one time we were um, at the mall just looking for job applications, and she wouldn't even go into the stores to even ask for an application. She didn't want to be there. Yeah. Are you ready to be an aunt? Um, I'll be honest, I'm a little bit excited about being an aunt, but I really want the baby to have a good, responsible mom. The job thing is absolutely true. It's a fight at home, you know, and I've tried to explain to her, you know, you're making the decision to keep the baby, but yet you don't want to go get a job. What did you want to say? I cut you off right before we went. Oh, that's okay, but earlier Jeannie said that whatever Emily's decision is, she'll support it, but I think at this age, at 16, she really doesn't know what's best for her. And I think that it's our responsibility as parents to help her make the right decision, not necessarily support the wrong one. And I think the way Jeannie's approaching it is she's almost abdicating her responsibility as a parent. I think we have to teach Emily that it's not the best thing to keep the baby because 
she's not able to be an effective mother. I don't think that adoption should be forced, and I don't think it should be put out there as an ultimatum. What we've got here, this is like, think about it, we're all lost in the forest. I mean, we're deep in the forest. It's dark, it's windy, it's cold. We are totally lost. And so we all huddle up and say, okay, who is the most confused, disoriented, lost person in the whole group? And Emily raises her hand. He said, well, let's follow her. Yeah. Isn't that exactly what we're doing? Yeah. Who out of everybody involved is least equipped to make this decision? Yeah, probably her. Probably her? Yeah. <laughs> It would be her. Her 12-year-old be sister is better able to make this decision because she has some objectivity from it. Nobody has mentioned a word about what's best for this baby. We've talked about what you want. You want to have the baby. You want to get your, your, the father of this baby, who, by the way, is broken up with you, right? Correct. He's gonzo. He's just moved on. But you think he still loves you. He may not come back, isn't that true? And she doesn't want to deal with that. She doesn't want to hear it. It's, ha it's really hard to, to, for her do, to deal with it. Do you love him, or is he just the father of your baby? I love him. You, you love him. And you think he loves you? You think you're going to reconcile, and you said you want to get a little house, mm -hmm. and y'all move in and raise this baby. But he doesn't even talk to you now, right? He avoids talking to me a lot. Are you concerned at all about what's best for the baby? Not what you want to do, but what's best for the baby? I'm concerned that I won't be able to make the right decisions for the baby, like doctors, wise, and all that. Babies that are born to teen moms do much less well in school than babies who are born to older moms. Half of them fail a grade, okay? Um, Two-thirds of, of teen moms are, are poor, and kids without the dad involved, which is what we have here, are five times more likely to be poverty-stricken in life than those who have the father involved. And daughters of teen moms are three times more likely to become teen moms themselves, and the boys are two times more likely to wind up in prison. So what we have to look at here is that if, if you decide to do this because it's what you want to do, the, the, the future for this child is substantially compromised. I'm a product of a teen mom. My mom was 16 when she had me. She was put in the same position Emily is being put in now where her parents were, you know, she was being pressured pretty hard into adoption. Um, and, you know, she did raise me successfully and I know that might be that statistic where things worked out, you know, and, you know. No, I, I didn't say it was 100%. Right, I said, right. you, you, you were saying and, what's been the best interest of the baby Right. If you had a child and you were standing on the, on the street corner and the child was going to cross the street and you, you checked the stats and you thought, well, 50% of the time a kid crosses the street, they get hit by a car, eh, one and two, take a shot. Right. Would you do that? No. It's not something that I wanted for her. I would certainly never wish that, you know, my daughter would be a teen mom. I'd never, you know, wished that this would happen. You know, I wish that she would go on and go to college and, you know, get her life together, get married and start her family and all of that. Okay, but we're talking about the baby, not your daughter right, right now. Because right. you, you, you have to, you have some divided loyalty here and the baby doesn't have a voice. I have said before, I am so glad I had boys. Um, <laughs> because, I mean, the decisions seem so much easier. And in this situation, I am concerned that boys who get girls pregnant get a pass. I mean, we're here talking about this. We're here talking about what to do and what your decision needs to be. Dad's not here. We can't let these boys just get a free pass. I think that's ridiculous. Now, babies require a lot during their first year of life. Now, I asked you to take a quiz, Emily, before the show, right? And I took away her cell phone and all the electronic equipment so she couldn't Google up the answers. Um, so we want to see how she did. Now, I'm doing this not just for you, but for all the teen moms that are out there because 
uh, or all teenagers out there, because I want people to understand there's a lot that goes into this. Now, one of the questions we pulled is, what is the cost of prenatal care? Your answer was $420. You said for the first year, you, you thought it would be $420. Um, but the average answer actually is $1,500. So you miss that by a lot, right? You got a third, less than a third. Now, do you know what copay is? No. <laughs> okay, so if you have insurance, and I don't know if you do, do you know if you have insurance? I have insurance. To yeah. cover this pregnancy? Uh, yeah, I'm doing Healthy Start. Okay, so you, you would have a copay, and the copay for a doctor visit is usually, I don't know, 20, 25 bucks. If you go to an emergency room, even if you have insurance, there's a copay. Do you know how much that is? No. Just to go, even with insurance, you would have to pay on average of 120 bucks. If you were working 20 hours a week at seven, eight bucks an hour after taxes, that would be all of your money just to go to the emergency room one time. And then you would be broke. Question two, what is the average cost of baby food for one year? Now, your answer on baby food uh, was $300. You think she's high or low? No. Okay, the correct answer is $672. What is the average cost of diapers for one year? Your answer was 600 bucks. High or low? No. Okay, well the correct answer was $1,152. This is 320 diapers. That's one month's supply because a year's supply of diapers, on your budget, you'd be changing a diaper twice a day. But in an average year, you're going to change a diaper 3,840 times a year. Whoa. What's the average cost to raise a baby for the first year? Uh, your answer was, you remember? $5,000. $5,000. And the actual cost is $10,158. So you missed that by half as well. Now, that includes food and clothes and prenatal care. Then after the baby is born, you've got to have the follow-up visits and all the injections, all of the things that you uh, have to have. That doesn't include housing. It doesn't include special things like toys and all of that sort of thing. We did our research, and if you worked 20 hours a week at, at minimum wage, you would make $146 a week. That's $7,592 a year. Now, you, you say extracurriculars could get in the way of that, but let's say you did no extracurriculars, you just went to school, then you went to work, you worked 20 hours a week, you would make $7,500. Well, it's $10,000 just for the essentials, so you're now $2,500 short. And then while you're working, you've got the cost of childcare, unless mom just says, well, okay, I'll watch the baby while you go work. Childcare would probably cost more than you would make. So you're in a real pickle. If you pay a babysitter, they're gonna make as much as you make on your job. And then if you decide that you want a house with this, say this boyfriend comes back and, and you get a house, I mean, you know, even a modest home with utilities, you got to pay electricity and gas and what. All this is you know, probably going to cost you a thousand bucks a month minimum. So you're way in the hole. How, how did you plan to make all of that up? All the money? Yeah. Because um, you're coming up about ten, fifteen thousand short. Well, at first I wasn't expecting the dad to leave, so I was expecting to kind of do half and half. But now it's well, but even if he came back, I'm sure he would have an exciting career in the fast food industry. So, I mean, that's, I mean, he doesn't have any skills, right? He sculpts. He sculpts? Yeah. <laughs> well, problem solved. <laughs> now, you guys have been listening to the conversation that I, I've been having down here um, with Emily and and her family. Uh, what's your reaction to her thinking at this point? She doesn't know. She doesn't know half of it. 
What do you mean? Well, my husband and I own a house, and just in bills for the house, well over $1,000. That doesn't include Ethan and all the bills that we pay for him, the doctor bills, the diapers, the food, everything. What was the biggest shock for you? The fact that she's not, doesn't already have a no, job. I mean, for you in your life. Oh. Um, you were a cheerleader. Correct. And you moved in with your boyfriend at 17? I did. Because you said you felt like a grown-up. I did. Yeah. How'd that work out? Not so well. It definitely was the biggest mistake moving in with him that early. Yeah. How long after you moved in before you got pregnant? Three months. Three months. So you were 17. I was 17 when I got pregnant. What have you had to give up? I had to give up going to college. I had already had a scholarship to school. Um, I had to give up friends, going out, sorority, a sorority that I planned on being in. I had to give up time, money, everything. Yeah. You know, I said that teen moms don't have a good track record of finishing high school. How did you do? I dropped out. You dropped out. You working on your GED um, now? I'm getting my GED next month, and then January I'll be starting college. How did it affect your relationship with your friends? Um, I don't really have a lot of friends that aren't moms anymore. 90% of my friends are parents. How about you, Melissa? Well, I got pregnant when I was 18. The reason I did it was I thought babies were cute and I wanted a baby. You said you got pregnant, you moved in with your boyfriend and you were pregnant within a week? I found out I was pregnant a week later. A week later? Yes. And uh, you, kind of like I was talking about before, you thought babies were cute. Yes. They do grow up, though, don't they? Yes, I did not realize all the expenses. Yeah. Yeah, you were having unprotected sex, we right? Were. Yeah, we were. And at the time you were doing that, did you want a baby? We did want a baby, but after we, we it also wasn't working for us, so we decided not to have a baby, and a week after, I come out pregnant. Okay. Uh, is he still involved? Yeah, we got married a month after. How, how are you doing financially? We're not doing so good. How so? Um, I'm the only one working right now. He's going to school for EMT, and I know he's going to school and not working because he's trying to make it better for us in the future, but it's not working for me right now. Yeah, so it's hard for you. You're eight months pregnant yeah, and you're working. What kind hard. of work do you do? I do customer service for an insurance office. Okay. It's not you, hard, but you I get just to sit get down? I get to sit down, but I just get tired of being there. Oh, yeah, gosh, I'll bet so. Well, Jackie, Courtney, Christina, and Melissa all have one thing in common. They're teen moms, or soon will be, and they've had to make major sacrifices because of this decision of getting pregnant before they were at a point in life where they could sustain themselves, let alone someone else. Now, anything you guys think she needs to weigh in her decision about what to do at this point? Because your decision's over. I mean, it is what it is. You've now got the baby. I'm sure you love the baby. But is there anything she needs to really be thinking about? Yes. Um, if you don't think that you're personally ready for it, then I wouldn't do it. But you have to be ready to give up your life because you don't matter anymore. Every decision that you make is because of the baby. Are you prepared to do that? Yes, I'm prepared. She's not prepared. Why do you say that? Because I read every book and went to every class and I wasn't prepared. I prepared in every way that I thought I could, but when he came, I wasn't prepared. Nobody's prepared, especially a teenager, especially a 16-year-old who's still in school. I just think you need to think about stuff because not everything's going to be perfect. There's stuff that could go wrong. I'm not a single mother, but I feel like I am because my boyfriend's constantly at school or work, <laughs> so I'm taking care of the baby by myself. You know, and it's, it's, it's going to be hard. Are, are you at all concerned about the fact that you're forcing this major life change on the rest of your family? Yes. That's been the biggest point of conflict between my husband and I is, you know, I, mm -hmm. I know that, you know, I'm there to support her with the light, you know, the, what I'm going to have to do and step up. and. You know, my husband doesn't want any part of it, and it's caused extreme. I mean, it's really getting in between our marriage. Okay, and, and you said if you're forced to choose, you're going to do what? I'm, I would have to choose my daughter. I don't know who, what mother wouldn't choose their child over someone yeah. else. 
yeah. and I don't want to do that. I absolutely 100% don't want to do that. Um, but I just feel like I'm kind of in protection mode at this point. I feel lost of how to support her, how to, you know, work with my husband and be able to discuss it because it's to the point where we we don't talk about it at all. If we even bring it up, that's it. It's it's a heated conversation. It it leads to a huge argument, and I, I don't I don't know what I'm supposed to do. But are you protecting her? I am protecting her. If if what you're doing is supporting a choice and a decision in her mm -hmm. that will change her life in a way from which she may never recover, she'll go down a, a, a path and, and, I mean, education will be gone. All of those things can and statistically predicted will happen. Is it protective to do that because you're afraid she's going to have an emotional reaction to separating from this baby and placing it for adoption? I mean, I, I see your point on that, and I don't know. I haven't, I guess, thought of it in that, that light. I think what I'm protecting her from I, is, when I say that, is the negativity that's come and the, the forcefulness that's come from everybody. But is it negativity or is it reality? I mean, it's, it's like I'm saying, if it would be very negative for me to come in in the middle of Thanksgiving dinner and say, Jeannie, I, I hate to tell you this, but your master bedroom is totally ablaze. It is, in, it is on fire. And you would say, well, that is so negative. We're having dinner here. Can you not see this? It's Thanksgiving. I said, well, I understand. But it is on fire, and it's now going up through the roof. And, I mean, this is rolling down the track. You can say, well, you're just being so negative. Would I be negative, or would I be realistic in telling you the, the truth about what's getting ready to happen? That's realistic. And mm -hmm. I, all I'm trying to say is, look, I, I've been through this so many times, and I look at this precious daughter you have, and you are a delightful young woman. I mean, seriously, you're, you're as cute as you could be. Uh, but I have to say, it seems to me that her readiness and preparedness to be a mother, even with you guys backstopping her, it is practically non-existent, which it shouldn't be. She's 16. She's a child having a child. But part of growing up is to realize when you choose the behavior, you choose the consequences. Mm -hmm. And she chose a behavior here with a consequence that affects a human being for the rest of their life. Do you give proper consideration to what is best for this baby? I feel like I'm the only one speaking for the baby here. Mm -hmm. The baby has no voice. I'm trying to say, you know, okay, I've either, I can either stay with this teen mom and I, I can have two times more likelihood of going to prison, having a, a teen pregnancy if I'm a girl, flunking in school, living on poverty, or I can go live with a family that desperately wants a child, has been screened by professionals, is mature, is stable, is financially well-rounded, everything is in place, to give me a chance to be loved and have traction. Hmm. I, I get that. I know. It, I'm not saying that the best, the best thing for her to do is keep the baby. I, I don't believe that. What I do believe is that, I guess it's just, I feel like that, you know, I'm trying to protect her feelings, and I know that there's the baby there, and I know I've got to protect the baby's feelings, and I, I do get that. And but you're trying to I protect her feelings her. in the moment right. without looking ahead. Our teen pregnancy rate in America is eight times higher than it is in Japan. It's two times higher than it is in the UK. I mean, we're doing something wrong, and that's a conversation for another day. We already are pregnant in this situation, and when I say we, I mean you, you, and you are pregnant, because this isn't something where she's going to have this baby and go off to young motherland. And the reality is, you thought you were 12 years into the mission, 16 years into the mission, but the truth is you're starting over. 
because you're going to have to raise this baby. Do you get that reality? She I can do. do what she can. Right. But it's like, you know, it'd be like asking her to get taller. Right. No, I... <laughs> you just, you know, it's not a matter of I want it really bad because, you know, her, her brain isn't fully developed yet. Emotionally, mentally, physically, she's just not to the point yet that it's fair to ask her to do everything she's getting ready to be asked to do. If she, you know, continues to choose to keep the baby, I know I'm going to end up raising the, the baby. <clears throat> I don't know... How we've had conversations when no one's around and you know talked about it and I've asked her and we've you know gone over it and you know she's adamant she's 100 percent I'm keeping the baby and she's telling me this and I don't know as a mom how to <coughs> persuade her that some that this well, isn't the best thing. Let me thing. ask you why are you so adamant about keeping this baby? I want to step up and try and say I can try it. And if I succeed, I can say I succeeded. Instead of just saying, well, this is too hard, I'm going to back down because this isn't good for the baby. What is in the best interest of the baby? I just know if I was adopted, I wouldn't feel that loved. I'd be like, well, why did my, why did my parents keep me? And they might understand that I couldn't <clears throat> afford it or anything, but I know that it'd be really difficult for everybody. I can think of no greater act of love than for the parents of a child who are not equipped to give that child the best chance in life. I can think of no greater act of love than to put their feelings aside and place this baby in a loving home that gives it a better chance at life. I, I mean, to say that you would not feel loved and would wonder why your, your mother wouldn't keep you. Parents that place their children for adoption do so because they love that child more than themselves. I think you need to have a, a serious reality conversation with your daughter. I mean, obviously she has no clue what things cost. Yeah, I can see that. She, she has no clue. She still fantasizes that this boyfriend is, is, is going to come back and be in the picture. You've got yeah. a daughter living in denial. You've got a daughter living in fantasy. And it is your job to say, if we're going to make this decision, let's make it with full set of facts on the table. And I, th I, I would ask you to revisit that. I can't say anything about her being pregnant or the child or anything like that at home. You know, because, you know, I... I, you know, I feel like I don't have that support system behind me trying to kind of talk her through it. And I don't know how <clears throat> to do that. I mean, I... There are specialized counselors, Emily, that, that work with these decisions. They, they work with adoption agencies. They work with uh, adoptive parents and, and, and bio moms, which is you to think through this and put all the cards on the table to, to think it through. Would you be open to sitting with someone like that and discussing this if I've arranged that for you? To, to sit down and say, help me think through this so I can go back and make and revisit my decision. Would, would you at least listen to what someone had to say? No. You say no because you think that's a step towards adoption? Yes. One thing that I'm concerned about is if she chooses adoption, if she, you know, in the beginning choose, chose not to, to have the baby, I feel like, too, I'm worried that in six months we're going to be right back in this position. We're going to be sitting here, her wanting a baby, or, you know, either wanting a baby, pregnant. You know, I think she's got it in her head that she wants to have a baby. And I, I'm going to ask you, I if like I set this up for you and her to go and sit down and, and listen with reason to both sides, the pros and cons, and there are cons. I, I don't, I don't doubt. Listen, there are cons. It's difficult. It's a difficult decision to to, to hand that baby over. I get that, mm -hmm. but somebody needs to sit down and crack the fantasy world and deal with the realities here. 
if I make that specialized resource available to you, will you go with her? Absolutely. Well, I want to thank all of my guests for being here today. Look, I know this is a difficult subject. I know I'm going to get letters from some of you saying you are trying to push that girl into placing that baby for adoption. You this, you that. And I know I'm going to get letters that say she doesn't get it. Somebody needs to give her a wake-up call. Um, and probably you're right on both counts. I don't think, Emily, that you are prepared to be a parent at this point. I think your life takes a drastic turn. I think the baby's life takes a drastic turn. I think you just need to think through this and, and consider it. You look like you were about to bust to say something, Courtney. What was uh, it? I just don't think reality has hit her yet. She, the fact that she doesn't even have a job just strikes me as I'm just amazed. She should have a job by now, if anything, to be saving some money. She still has time to save some money to put away. The amount of money is ridiculous. And I hope they're prepared to spend money, too, because they will. Yeah. If she doesn't get a job, they will. And you know, it's, what do you want to say, Charles? Well, adding on to that, when we, the last time we talked to Emily about getting a job, she told us she did not have to get a job yet because the baby hasn't even been born. I had a job. That was afterwards. Yeah, you got to bankroll some money here. This, I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to put the facts out here. And mom, you, you got to, you got to play bad cop at least some of the time here and, and visit. It is not negativity, it is reality. I'm going to make the resource available. Okay. I, I hope you embrace it. Thank you. Little sister, thank you for being here and talking about all of this. You, you. You, you are a prize egg, I'll I, tell you for sure. I really appreciate you even letting me come and be on this show because I know this isn't what you usually do. You bet. You, you need your own talk show. <laughs> Thanks for being here. So long. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.